Okay, greetings. Uh, this is John Mayer here with another math lesson. This one is uh, differentiation using first principles. So let's just write that here. Differentiation uh, from first principles. Okay, so I'll just start with the main formula that we use for this and um, talk a little bit about the notation as well. So. Uh, so f dash of x, uh, this is uh, the notation for the derivative. Um, and so we say the, the derivative is equal to uh, the limit, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And just let me fix up that little thing there get that. That looks a little bit better now. Okay, so that's the main formula that we use for differentiation for first principles. Uh, now let's let's see where this comes from. Um, and really all it is is uh, it's a, a variation on the gradient formula. Um, so I'll show you how it's derived. So, okay, so this is it here. And I'll just say over here, this is the symbol for uh, the derivative, the derivative. Okay, f dash, or f prime is, is what we call it. Okay, okay. so you'll notice here as well that we're using um, f of x function notation. Um, so just, if, if this is a bit intimidating for some of you, just, just think of it as y, okay? Okay, so let's start with, um, let's start with a picture. So we have uh, the xy plane, and we have some function coming through like this, we'll call this f of x, okay? And let's put in a point here, we'll call p, another point here we'll call q, um, and we'll have the x value for p is x, and the y value will be f of x. And for q we'll have the x value is x plus h, and its corresponding y value will be f of x plus h. Okay, there we go. Now, if we if we uh, want to find the gradient of the line from P to Q, which would be the gradient of the secant, so this is uh, secant is a line that cuts at two points. Um, so if we want to find that, then what we can do is we can say the gradient, the gradient of the secant PQ is equal to uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, but here our y2 is actually f of x plus h. Our y1 is f of x. So we'll write that as f of x plus h minus f of x. And then divided by x2 minus x1. So here x2 is x plus h and x1 is x. Okay, so so this is really just the gradient formula. Let, let me write that up in here actually. M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's our standard gradient formula. Um, we learned that back when you were studying linear functions first. So this is a gradient formula. And by the way, the, the derivative is, is really just a, another word for, for gradient, okay? Right, so this is the background. Uh, so now we have this version of um, the gradient formula applied to the gradient of the secant from P to Q. Okay, now let's just come back to our picture here for a second here. Now, we, we, we used H. Now, why do we use H? The idea is that uh, H is a very small value, okay? So we, we imagine that the points P and Q are really close to each other. In fact, so close that um, they're almost the same point. Um, so what that means is, um, you know, H is really close to zero. X is almost the same as X plus H. Um, and in turn, these, these Y values here, F of X and F of X plus H, may also be quite close. Uh, but not necessarily as close together as these two. Okay, and it, of course it depends on the function and what the function is doing. All right, so um, so now let's let's consider the the scenario where Q um, is approaching P. So 
In other words, we want to we want to think about moving along this curve from Q towards P. Okay, so incrementally as we move along, what we can say is this: uh, we can say as uh, P approaches. Whoops, it's not what I meant to write at all. Uh, as P approaches Q, so as P as P approaches Q, uh, we find that um, we find that H the value here, this is this is h, h is the distance from here to here, we find that h approaches zero. Okay? Now what that means is that uh, sorry guys, I really messed that up. As as q approaches p, not p yeah. You're probably thinking, what's he talking about? That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so let me just adjust that. Okay, concentrate, concentrate John. Uh, here we go. So as, as Q approaches P, as Q approaches P, H approaches zero. Okay, and so what we can what we can think about now is that um, that Q is becoming P. Okay, and we might get to this limiting limiting um, kind of zone or, or, or value where, where where that actually happens, right? So so then let's now think about the tangent. So remember here, this is a secant a secant from uh, P to Q, a secant is a line that cuts at two points. Now we have a tangent at P. Okay, so tangent at P. This is secant PQ. Alright, so now what's interesting is that we can say um, the secant, right, so we said as Q approaches P, H approaches zero, but also we can say that the secant approaches the tangent. Okay, the secant, the secant PQ um, approaches or becomes a tangent at P. Okay, so all of these things are really, <clears throat> you know, different ways of saying the same thing, right? We're, we're, we're just looking at this scenario where, where, where Q is so close to P that it, it becomes the same point. The two points become one, okay? So what we can then do is, with, with this formula here that we, um, we, we created for the gradient of the secant, what we can say is that, um, well, that just, that just becomes... Um, the gradient of the tangent becomes the gradient of the tangent. Okay, so we we can write all of this again, but we need to just put in this um, extra qualification here that um, that the limit of h must approach zero. Okay, so so we can say the gradient of the tangent is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of the gradient of the secant. Okay, so the gradient of the secant, uh, which is this f of x plus h minus f of x. Um, now, <clears throat> note also, and I, I probably should have made mention of this earlier, um, this denominator here, which is, you know, the x2 minus x1, so x2 is x plus h, x1 is x, um, this denominator just simplifies to be h. Okay, you can probably see that here, x plus h minus x, so these two x's, um, they really cancel out. So, so now, what we're looking at here is we have our formula. We have this thing here that we were, well, that that I laid out, you know, first of all. So, um, so the gradient of the tangent we can say is f dash of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h, um, oops, minus f of x all over h. Okay, so this is the formula that we we wanted. And this this is a kind of a basic derivation of, of how to start with, say, you know, this very familiar idea of gradient, and now we can apply it to um, to any function, right? Any function that we choose that is that is nonlinear, or even linear, um, and and the whole concept is based around this idea of two points that are really really close together on the curve, uh, separated only by a small distance. And we can represent the separation by, by the difference in the x values as, as this h, okay? Now, if we could somehow make h equal to zero, um, then we'd be there, wouldn't we? we the problem is, though, um, we're dividing by h in this formula. So we can't make h equal to zero, okay? You can't divide by zero, okay? We can't divide, can't divide by zero, um, and so, uh, generally, um, h can't equal to zero, okay? Well, not generally, 
pretty much any time h cannot equal to zero. But there is a there is a slight thing that we do in practice, and and that is that we make h equal to zero. But to make h equal to zero, we've we've got to do a little bit of a trick, and and, and that is to um, disappear the h from the from the denominator position here. Okay, and we, so we that's what we'll do. So let, let's have a look at an example. Okay, now uh, for those uh, students of mine who who are working out of a textbook, um, the the textbook reference will be exercise uh, 7.1, I believe. So let, let me just write that here. So textbook textbook reference is what's well, chapter seven, uh, but in particular we're looking at um, exercise 7.1, and we start we'll start at question five. So I'll look at question five a, I guess to just to kick it. Okay, so exercise 7.1, question 5a, here we go. Okay, so I'll just slide this up. Um, let's put it to here. That's good. So, so we're going to refer to, to this formula. We're going to be using this formula to do this question. So let's write out the function. The function is f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 7. And so the aim of this question is... Um, we need to find we need to find the derivative the derivative at x equal to three. So there's, that that implies two steps in fact. So so we think of the first step as part a, if you like, is is to find the derivative function. So we do that bit first, that, and that's the main part of what we're doing, by the way. So find the derivative function. And the second step will be um, to find, uh, and the derivative function, we, we can label that as f dash of x. The second step is to, just to work it out, evaluate, if you like, evaluate the der derivative function uh, when x is equal to 3. Okay, so that's really what we're doing here. Okay, now, if we, <coughs> if we go back to this formula here, um, you can see that there's, only really two things we need to worry about, um, two things that we need to substitute into. So there's the f of x plus h bit, and there's the f of x bit. Okay, so now we already have the f of x bit. It's the function itself. So that bit's sorted. Um, we just need to work out this bit here. So in other words, let's find out a variation on this um, when x is equal to h. Okay, so, so let's write that here. So f of x plus h is equal to... Um, so all we're doing here is replacing x in the function with uh, our new x value, which is just x plus h. Okay, and remember that's just a, it's a it's it's an x value that's just a little bit above uh, x. Okay, because h is really small; it's a very small value. Um, if you like, imagine imagine h to be um, some value like um, you know point zero 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 one or something like that. You know, just just to give you a sense of how small h can be, okay? All right, so in here, um, write x plus h all squared plus f of x plus h minus 7. Now, just a, just a bit of a recall, if you like, over here for, for those that may have forgotten um, the binomial expansion. So if you have x plus h all squared, that really means x plus h times x plus h. Okay, and we apply distribution to this, um, and so we end up with, um, what am I doing here? So x distributes to x here, the x over here goes to this x, goes to that h, the h here goes to that x, goes to that h. So when we, when we do all of that, we end up with x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared, and we, sh we should all know this, uh, you know, that's really just uh, nicely simplified and written as x squared plus 2xh. Uh, plus h squared. So that's that's a, a basic binomial expansion. It's 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 an identity that we should you know pretty much know inside out by now. So, um, but uh, yeah. So so we take for granted that we can just go from here to here in a very very simple way. So expanding this out, x squared plus two xh uh, plus h squared. Uh, let's also expand this. So the five through the brackets here. So we end up with five x plus 5h, and then of course we've got minus 7. So this is, uh, this is our statement now for f of x plus h. Here's our statement for f of x. 
Remember, we just need to substitute these two things into here and here. Okay, so in other words, what we're doing is we're going to take all of this, right, and we're going to substitute it into that part of the formula. And we'll take all of this and we'll substitute this into that part of the formula. Okay, so let's do that now. So I'll write, I'll write the formula out. So we're going to say the derivative in general, the derivative f dash of x is equal to the limit. And it's important when you communicate your, your response to a problem like this that, uh, at least to start with anyway, you, you write the formula out first, okay? And, and don't forget the limit statement because that's a really important part of it, okay? So f of x plus h minus f of x. It's, I know it's a bit tedious. Um, after a while, you know, you can, you can tend to, if you've, if you've got the formula there, you can just, you know, do the straight substitution, okay? And here I go. So this is where we substitute in. Now, a good idea as well when you substitute is to use brackets for each of these parts uh, because you're going to be subtracting one from the other. So it's, it's, it's useful, um, you know, so you don't sort of lose track of what's what and what's going on that uh, we put all of this in one set of brackets, so x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 5x plus 5h, and try not to forget any of the terms here, whatever you do. Uh, I find students tend to make the error uh, just in this step here, just expanding this out to here, so um, um, you'll, know, you'll know when you, you've made a mistake here because later on it's not going to work, obviously, and um, it tends not to work um, in, in the cancellation here. So um, okay, I'm just going to um, retrieve some of this space back. You know, a bit of a... Uh, I love my, uh, my whiteout. Um, so let's just um, keep that like that there. So, okay, so we're going to subtract all of this. Make sure we have it in brackets. Just let that whiteout dry a bit. And, and we know that it's all going to be over H in the end. Okay, so this bit here is X squared. Um, plus 5x minus 7 close brackets okay so there we go so we haven't really done too much it doesn't feel like I mean sure this this looks long and uh, you know a little bit intimidating perhaps but um, there's really not much we've done all we've done is uh, substituted two things into a formula uh, so now it's just a case of uh, simplifying cancelling now what's really nice and you might be able to see this is that um, um, all of these three terms here will cancel. Okay, and I'm back. Um, not that you would have noticed that I've been away. Um, the video stopped recording, so uh, there's been a sudden change. You can probably see that I've done some, some crossing out here. Um, so, so I think the last thing that, um, that was mentioned before that video stopped recording was that um, we're looking, we're collecting our like terms <clears throat> across the top line here and, and cancelling. Uh, we've got the big subtraction here. So x squared here and the x squared here, they, they cancel. The 5x here and the 5x here cancel. And the minus 7 and the minus 7 cancel. Um, now, as it always happens, um, the, the terms in the right-hand part here uh, always disappear. Okay, so in other words, the, the terms of the function... Uh, f of x, so this f of x bit, always cancels, okay, and if it doesn't, uh, you know you've made a mistake, and the mistake is most likely um, somewhere up here where you've, where you've done the expanding here. Okay, so, so given that they cancel out, let's write the next line, so the next line is f of f dash of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of what's left here, the remnants, uh, so what have we got, we've, we've got 2xh plus h squared plus 5h. So only three terms left in here and each and every one of those terms has a h involved. Um, and don't forget we're dividing by h as well. Now this is where it gets good. Um, so we write out just a couple more lines here just to finish this off. Um, let's factorize the h. Every, every term here, all three of these terms have a h, so let's factorize the h. So 2x plus h plus 5, and <clears throat> we're dividing by h, so that's handy. Now we can do some more cancelling, which is just the h there, and so our final line will just be the limit, so h approaches 0, of 2x plus h plus 5, okay? 
Uh, so that's f dash of x. Let me write all this in. All this goes here. Uh, now just checking you can see that. Good. Right. Um, so just, I've only got this much room here and I'll, I guess I can I'll just slide it up just a little bit. Uh, so let's just get that there. So we just got that little bit of extra space to work with. Um, okay, the last step um, is really just making h equal to zero. Okay, so previously um, we were saying up here, now it's kind of disappeared, let me just slide that back a bit. Uh, back up here we were saying that, um, yeah, just up here, um, <clears throat> we said that uh, h can't be zero because you're dividing by zero. Okay, so that's 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 the, the problem we face uh, with we're trying to use the gradient formula where the change in x is zero. Um, now we're kind of doing that now anyway because we're going to make h equal to zero. So come back to here. So we're going to make h equal to zero, and by making h equal to zero, uh, we won't be dividing by h because there's no longer a denominator of h. Okay, so so let's now write that f dash of x is equal to. We don't need the limit statement because we're we're essentially making h equal to zero. Okay, so h has been made equal to zero. And so what we have now is um, we have our gradient function or our, our derivative function. This is it here. Okay. Um, and this is, um, you know, this is the original function. This is a gradient function. Now it seems like a lot of work, all of that, just, just to get a gradient function. Um, and in a minute I'll show you a, a shortcut, a, a quick way, in fact, to, to just go from here straight to here. Okay. Before we do that, though, Let's just answer the, um, the second part of the question because the question was really find the derivative at x equal to 3 um, and we broke that up into two steps. So we said find the derivative function f dash of x and, and we've now done that here. Uh, the second step is really just evaluate at x equal to 3. So let's do that. Um, we'll just move our work into up here. So we, so we say at x equal to 3 um, f dash of x or f dash of 3 is just this thing here when x is equal to 3, so 2 times 3 plus 5, which is clearly 11. Good, that's our, that's our gradient uh, at x equal to 3. Now, because this thing here is a quadratic function, uh, we can sort of come up with a, a rough sketch of what that, what that would be. So it might be something like this. So there's our quadratic, that's, that's f of x. And we're looking at... Um, we're looking at the x value equal to 3, so if we take a line up, a vertical line up from, from the x-axis when x is equal to 3 on, onto the curve, we can put a, a tangent through there. And what we'd find is that if we were to find the gradient of that tangent, we'd, we'd find it would equal to 11. Okay, Because that's exactly what this is saying. This is saying uh, the derivative of the function at x equal to 3 is equal to 11. Okay, so. So there's two things, just to summarise, two things here to keep in mind. Firstly, uh, this is a, a non-linear function, so uh, it doesn't have a, a gradient that is just a single value, like, like a linear function. Uh, what it has instead is a, is a function that describes a gradient. Um, so, so the gradient that we want to find depends on the x value. And you, and you can see here, if you follow the curve around for different x values, okay, if we follow it around, you can see, you know, it's a... It's a negative gradient here, and it's, it's a negative gradient here as well. It's also a negative gradient here, and and just you can see I'm I'm sort of progressively making the the negative sign smaller to indicate that the gradient gets smaller, in 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 the sense of the magnitude of the gradient. In fact, when we get to here, we can we can say the gradient zero because um, if we put a tangent in here, the tangent will be a horizontal line. So so the gradient here is zero. Um, <clears throat> as we come around this other side of the turning point, we notice that we now have positive gradients and, and we can represent, you know, as we move along, as x changes, as x, x increases, the gradient of the curve will actually increase, okay? Um, so specifically, we're looking for the gradient at x equal to 3 and, and we can see now that the gradient at x equal to 3 is equal to 11 and you can see the curve would be um, quite steep at that point. Uh, it's a good idea to, to graph these functions um, just to get the visual um, the visual look of what's going on, you know, it, it really helps, I think. Um, personally, I'm, I'm a bit visual, so if I, if I can see visually what's going on, 
uh, then I can understand it you know, much more. Um, the last thing I'll show you before we just wrap this video up is just to see if I can squeeze it in here in fact is this uh, shortcut method that, uh, that I mentioned. So, so the shortcut, um, now you're not going to believe this and you're probably just going to say well why bother with all this? Okay, um, And we'll get to that. Uh, so here's, here's our function f of x is equal to uh, x squared minus 5x plus 7. All we need to do all we need to do here to find the derivative is we take the, the power and we do it term by term. There's three terms, so one term at a time. Starting with the first term, um, we, we, we look at the power. The power here is 2. Now we take the power and we multiply that by the coefficient. So in other words, it, it comes down here. In fact, let me just squeeze in the general rule here. So if you have, if you have y equals ax to the power of n, then the gradient, we, so I'm, I'm jumping around, I'm, here we're using f of x, here now I'm back to y and y dash here, f, f of x and f, f dash of x. They're both, the, it's the same thing. y refers to the function, y dash refers to the derivative function. So, same thing here. So, the general rule for differentiating polynomial terms, uh, it's called the power rule. Okay, we take the power n in general, multiply it by the coefficient a, so that's a times n. Uh, we write out x, but we we now have it to a power that is one less than what it was. So that will be n minus one, and that's it. There's just two things we need to do there. The first is multiply the coefficient by the old power and come up with a new power which is one less than what the old one was, and that's all you have to do. Okay, so let's do it here. So x squared in this case will be just two x. Okay, so we we can put two x to the power of one if we want. There's no need to put the 1 there, uh, because we know that x to the power of 1 is the same as just x. Uh, this one here, you can, you can imagine there's a 1 there, so if we, um, if we multiply 1 by negative 5, we get negative 5, and then we have x to the power of 0, okay, which is, you know, x to the power of 0 is 1, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Uh, and the 7, the 7 is a constant now, uh, there's, a, there's a special way of dealing with that, and that is that uh, constants always differentiate to zero, so it just goes to zero, so tidy that up, it's just 2x minus 5. Um, now, <laughs> what have I done? I've written the function down wrong, silly me, god, oh. alright, that's okay, we, we can see my error. So the, the original function is x squared plus 5x minus 7, I've, I've got these back to front, that should be plus 5, and that should be minus 7, so uh, I apologise, and... I will fix that up right now. So, so that's okay. That should just be a plus. That'll be a plus. That's minus whatever. It's just zero. So there we go. Um, in two two steps, three two steps, um, we we end up with two uh, x plus five as our derivative function. Okay, good, great, um, and you can see it's the same. Um, so why why do all this work? Why do all this work? Um, I think. As a beginner, as, as a new learner to this, um, I think it's valuable that, uh, that you appreciate uh, where, where this, this formula, this formula here, where it comes from. Okay, this formula is, um, is really just the grading formula. Okay, and, and we can use this formula to, you know, in this instance, as, as for this example anyway, we can use this formula to come up with um, uh, a gradient function for, for a quadratic. Um, but, um, you know, in practice, of course, we're not going to do this every time. In fact, we, we can apply this to any function, not just polynomials. We can do it for e to the x, uh, ln of x, sine of x, cos of x, and any function we choose. Um, and we also have shortcut methods for, for all those functions as well. Okay, that'll do for this one. Thanks very much.